Hello everyone. My name is Vaishnavi Parate. I am a law student and today we are going to discuss and learn about what is Employees Compensation Act 1923 and the amazing facts about it. So let's start. Let's start with the introduction. Every employee needs a secure job and wants to get compensation for the expenses he has incurred. This is a requirement that needs to be fulfilled by the company, whether it is small scale or large scale. After all, a company's success depends on its employees. Therefore, the protection of employees and their safety is a top priority of a company. Now let's see features of the Act. The Employees Compensation Act of 1923 is an act to provide payment in the form of compensation by the employers to the employees for any injuries they have suffered during an accident. Earlier this act was known as the Workman Compensation Act of 1923 when the employer was not liable to pay compensation. But now the situation is different. Now let's see who is eligible to get compensation. With the commencement of the new law, many benefits are also given to the employees. To be eligible for the benefits under the Employees Compensation Act, there are some requirements which needs to be fulfilled. You must be an employee of the company or organization. Second, you must have been injured at the workplace or the job was such that you have been injured. Let's say the employee's liability for compensation and in which circumstances it arises. Section 3 of the said Act states the employer's liability for compensation. Employer's liability in case of occupational disease includes certain occupations which expose employees to particular disease that are inherent. First, infrared radiations. Second, skin disease due to chemical or laser processing units. Third, hearing impairment caused by noise. Fourth, lung cancer caused by asbestos dust and disease due to effects of extreme climatic conditions. Let's understand this concept with a better example. Miners are at risk of developing a disease called silicosis. Sometimes miners also develop lung disease due to exposure to dust. The people who work in agricultural lands develop diseases through the spraying of pesticides. These pesticides are toxic in nature and are health hazards to many farmers. Let's see some important sections related to the same act. Section 3, subsection 3, the central government or the state government gives a notification in the official gazette which species the disease which will be deemed to be occupational disease under the provisions of subsection 2. And in the case of notification by the state government, these diseases are declared by the Act. Section 3, subsection 4. No compensation will be payable to an employee unless the disease is directly attributable to a specific injury that arises out of or in the course of employment. Now let's see how much compensation is paid to any employee in particular case. Section 4 defines where death results from the injury. In case the employee dies, an amount equal to 50% of the monthly wages multiplied by a factor as given in the Schedule 4 of the Act or rupees 80,000 is 
given, whichever is more. Where permanent total disablement results from the injury, in case the employee has total disablement, the amount given is 60% or rupees 90,000, whichever is more. Where permanent partial disablement results from injury. In the case of permanent partial disablement, the compensation provided is equal to disability as 60% or rupees 90,000. This act is made for the welfare of the employees. If the employee suffers personal injury by an accident, an accident arises out of and in the course of employment, then he can claim compensation from his employer. The amount of compensation is decided based on injury. So to claim compensation, one must know who can claim on his behalf and how much.